Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So, enriching heavy water. It's been over eight months since I started this project and so far, through our little electrolysis cell down here, I've still got it running, uh, we have amassed approximately a little bit under 1.4 litres worth of concentrated uh, deuterium in water. So hopefully it's around eight times concentrated based on the separation factor of electrolysis. Uh, and what we need to do is once this cell is done, this is going to generate another 200 milliliters of this eight times concentrate that we'll add to this and we'll have 1.6 liters approximately uh, of eight times concentrate, which should contain, hopefully, if everything goes well, two milliliters worth of pure heavy water in there somewhere. Uh, what we've got to do now though is because seeing as at the very start of the electrolysis runs I used an acidic electrolyte and now I'm using a basic electrolyte and I've just kind of mixed them together. We had sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide in there. Uh, they've kind of neutralized. We've got just sodium sulfate in there which we need to remove uh, through distillation which I'll set up in a bit. Once we've distilled it we'll then just add some more electrolyte and put it through the electrolysis cell again to reduce the volume down to 200 milliliters or something. So first of all, uh, seeing as the electrolyte is currently acidic from the sulfuric acid that I added at the very start, uh, I will go ahead and neutralize that with some sodium hydroxide. And then what we'll do is filter it to get rid of any solid particles that have come off the electrodes. So while that's filtering, I will assemble the distillation apparatus. So here it is, all neutralized and filtered. What it should be now is a very strong concentration of sodium sulfate because we had um, sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid which have just been mixed together in here and we have a lot of it I'm pretty sure. Uh, I've still got a little bit more filtering just over here but for now what we can do is just add some of this to the distillation apparatus and when we distill it over we should get our pure water with a high concentration of deuterium and should leave behind our sodium sulfate, which I'll save for other things. So the distillation setup is ready. We've got about 150 milliliters of our uh, deuterium concentrate with the sodium sulfate in there. And we've got the thermometer. We've got a pump for the water. Uh, it's a pretty stupid pump. I don't really like it very much because it needs 24 volts at over an amp. And the only way I can generate 24 volts at that kind of current is using two power supplies in series and it's a little bit annoying so I'll turn it on it's also very noisy and kind of bad but it does cool down this condenser pretty well so it should work out so what we'll do now is turn on the hot plate and wait for it to boil so obviously it's not going to be possible for me to distill over all 1.4 litres of the water at this stage. Uh, I'm just going to have to every day do, do a little bit of it, but at the end we should have that 1.4 litres of deuterium concentrated water distilled and purified so that we can move on to the second stage of enrichment. So the steam is now just about making it over. You can see uh, if it will focus on the thermometer. There we are. We've nearly got 100 degrees, so all those vapors are pretty much traveling over now. So I'll turn on the pump, and you probably can't see, but we are condensing our water through that tube. So a bit over half an hour later, it's boiling relatively well, and uh, we are getting some distillate to come over. So that's all great. Uh, we've reduced the volume of what we've put in the, the boiling flask by 25 milliliters roundabout. Uh, from past experience, I know that it takes about an hour to do every 50 milliliters uh, to distill over. So in a few more hours, this should be nearly done. So I think we're nearly done for today. Uh, 
We've got about 50 milliliters of the water left in the boiling flask and we've distilled over about 100 milliliters. Uh, I'll periodically just pour this into a new container and over the next week or so I'll uh, just continue distilling through all of this. And then by the end we'll have that 1.4 liters as pure water without any sodium sulfate dissolved in it. So there we are, around 120, 125 milliliters of our pure water deuterium concentrated stuff. Uh, I'll just add this to the container we've got ready and just stick the flask back on the apparatus. There we go. So as we're distilling, uh, every time we do it, we get left behind with this very concentrated solution of sodium sulfate. Uh, what I'm doing with this is as the, the boiling gets uh, more violent, I'll turn that off, it's reaching that point right now. Uh, this solution that's left, I don't really want it to splash over and into our distilled product. Uh, it did that a couple of times, just a little bit. And that's all right, we can have a little bit of sodium sulfate in there, it's just that we don't want all of the sodium sulfate that was in our original thing. Uh, that's why we're distilling it in the first place, just to get rid of the majority of the salt that was in there. Uh, what I'm doing with this concentrated stuff that kind of starts boiling violently, um, when the distillation stops, I've already turned that hot plate off, hopefully it will cool down pretty quickly. Uh, what I'm doing is with that is I'm putting it in this container over here, which has got our concentrated sodium sulfate solution, and I'll try boiling that down, uh, distilling it actually as much as I can uh, and then what I'll do is I'll put this in the fridge and hopefully hopefully we can crystallize out most of the sodium sulfate and because we do actually want all the water from here and we'll try to distill it off as it is still highly concentrated in deuterium uh, but we'll see how it goes I'll just keep just a little bit of water each time that we've got to take off and put in there because it doesn't like to boil once it reaches that point so as we're just finishing up the distillation, uh, not much to go now. Can't really see that, but there's not much left. Uh, we've got, I don't really know how much this is, probably over a litre now uh, that's been distilled. We've still got our impurities over here and a little bit distilling now. Uh, but in the meantime, I've made this uh, the next electrolytic cell. This is the cell that I'm gonna use to concentrate down the, uh, what is now the eight times concentrated heavy water. Uh, you can see in there I've got a lead cathode in the middle. Apparently this has got, um, got a relatively good separation between um, hydrogen and deuterium. And on the outside you can see I've got lead tin alloy solder, 50-50 solder. Uh, I've found that this works pretty well as an anode in a magnesium sulfate electrolyte, which is what I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to run this at a pretty low current, possibly four or five amps. So it'll take a fairly long time to concentrate down um, 1.6 litres of water down to something like 400 millilitres. But I think this will work really well. Uh, it'll last a fair while. We've got good electrodes in there and I'll seal it up nicely later. Just to show you the cell working, I've set it up uh, with a little bit of magnesium sulphate electrolyte and uh, it's progressing very nicely. Uh, we've got about one and a half amps flowing which is really good. I can add a lot more electrolyte to that to increase the current. Uh, but we won't be doing this right now. We've got to wait until we have all of our um, distilled concentrated heavy water and then we'll concentrate that down using this cell. So once this last bit of water boils down, uh, the remnants of that I'll add to our highly concentrated sodium sulfate solution. The good thing about sodium sulfate for this is that at really high temperatures uh, it's got a really high solubility, uh, even at 30 degrees or so it's still very soluble, but at low temperatures like 0 to 8 degrees, uh, the solubility of sodium sulphate is actually pretty low comparatively. This makes it really good because what we can do is when we've added our last little bit of water to this concentrated stuff, uh, we can filter that off and then we can cool it and have almost all of the sodium sulphate crystallize out and we'll be left with the last little bit of water which we'll distill over as well. And then we'll have finished our distillation 
or our concentrated heavy water stuff. So now with our concentrated impurities and sodium sulfate, we'll just filter that off into a kind of flexible container because we'll crystallize out the sodium sulfate in there and we'll want to break the crystals out so having a flexible container is useful. So with our solution here, uh, we just put it in a fridge for now, uh, leave it in there for a few hours and then hopefully all of our sodium sulfate will crystallize out. So after sitting in the fridge for close to two hours, we've got our nice sodium sulfate crystals, uh, they're kind of needle shaped. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, decant off the water that's on the top and then uh, see if I can dry out these crystals as well as I can. Save the water obviously because this is our concentrated uh, heavy water. And look at these crystals really, I think they're, I think they're pretty cool. I'm going to have to make some more sodium sulfate crystals in the future, try to make them look really nice because I like that. Very nice. Like, look at that, that's pretty cool. So sadly we don't actually want these nice large crystals of sodium sulfate. We want to get all the water out of them so we'll um, I'll kind of crush these up a little bit more and see if I can get a little bit more water out of them because we didn't get very much. We had around 400 milliliters before and now we've got, that's probably less than, less than 200 milliliters. Uh, which is understandable, there's probably a fair bit of water trapped inside. Uh, it's, a, it's a heptahydrate salt, so it's probably a fair bit actually in the crystal structure of the salt itself. But we'll see how much water we can actually get out just by crushing it up. Honestly, if the police come by my place and see all this set up, it's not going to look good. Honestly, this just looks worse, doesn't it? Anyway, I managed to squeeze out around 200 milliliters worth of water from the sodium sulfate. Uh, there's 150-200 milliliters of water, obviously now stored in the heptahydrate structure of the crystal. Uh, we can see if we can kind of dehydrate it and store the water uh, to recover the heavy water because 200 milliliters of water that's going to hold maybe like a quarter of a milliliter of heavy water which is a pretty hefty amount. Uh, I'll see if I can work out a way of kind of dehydrating slash distilling to get all that water out. But for now we'll distill what is now uh, not concentrated sodium sulfate. It should distill a lot easier. So we're distilling our last bit of water. Uh, I think I'm going to end the video here. It's getting a little bit long. Uh, this is the last bit of water that we've got to distill. And that will finish off our uh, distilled eight times concentrated. It's actually between four and eight times concentrated. We're being a bit optimistic by calling it eight times concentrated there, but uh, we'll have finished off distilling all of that. I've also finished uh, siliconing up the new electrolytic cell. So as soon as this finishes, I'll stick some uh, some of that in here and continue concentrating it down. This will probably take a little bit over a month to fully concentrate down uh, and then I'll get back to you with a part three. So till then, catch you next time.